Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, we'll be discussing my thoughts on Episode 7 of the anime series Mobile Suit Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans. And this was actually a pretty pimped episode, I have to say. Um, seeing Maruba trying to catch up with, you know, the uh, Tekadon crew, and effectively walking them right into their most needed aspect right now, trying to get into communication with Tewaz and use Tewaz as you know, sort of a protectoral conglomerate, something to assure they're reaching Earth without any trouble from Galahorn and everything like that. And, but because Maruba is this lion son of a bitch, you know, Naze Turbine, uh, you know, he basically being sort of a figurehead, a leader, if you will, amongst the Tewaz conglomerate, you know, that, that sort of uh, business conglomerate on the face of it, but we know to be sort of like Yakuza, you know, like a mafioso group and everything like that. Um, he's sort of fallen for, you know, what basically Maruba's telling him. Hook, line, and sinker. These kids stole my property, you know, shut down my company, and he can do no more than just sort of, <laughs> because this guy was sad sack in a, in a bar, you know, sort of fall in line with what he's saying and go after these kids, try to reclaim this property. But it's also because, you know, Naze has his own sort of wants as well. Um, being that he is a mafioso, sort of a gangster, he wants his cut of the money. <laughs> you know, oh, you have problems? Give me the money, just like good fellas. And um, I absolutely thought that was hilarious. I love all of the Tewa's sort of characters. It's mostly women. It's kind of like a ship of the Valkyries a little bit. Um, and it really called back one thing that the series continually reminds me of in how the story is unfolding in certain aspects of the characters, especially Mikazuki, is, uh, as I said from the beginning, one of, the, one of the best sort of mecha genre anime series that I got into in the last few years was Suse no Gargantia. And this particular crew kind of reminded me of Luckage, if you're familiar with that show, um, Luckage and her crew. They were kind of pirates and everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the vibe I'm getting with Amida, especially. Um, but even these more underling characters like Ozzy and Laughter, I think, is the one like sort of Harley Quinn, at, one doing her you know nail polish at the beginning of the episode. And she's called into battle, and she's pretty freaking kick-ass, you know. I mean, she's giving Mikazuki a run for the money in the Barbados. Granted, they're having some trouble with the Barbados and everything like that. It's not at full mast. But the fact that Mikazuki is having kind of his ass handed to him a little bit by laughter in this mobile suit, it's compelling that. I mean, this whole episode, the whole battle sequence, once they finally realize, okay, we're going head to head here, you know, in multiple formats. I mean, they call out everybody, you know. Eugene is left behind to actually take command of the ship. And you're like, well, where the hell is Orga gone? <laughs> you know? And he masterminds this uh, means by which they sort of just break into, you know, the Tewa's vessel and everything. And I thought that was pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> they switched it around like that. They create this gas cloud and, you know, um, basically turn the ship around. A very near miss, you know, they almost ram headlong into the uh, Tewa's vessel and it's all a ruse in order to make sure that Orga and his people can get aboard it and everything and um, but that's what I'm saying this whole battle sequence all through this episode is like one-upsmanship every step of the way from Amida going after Mikazuki and Nakahiro at first and <laughs> You know, Mikazuki, once they realize, oh, they have another mobile suit coming out, Laughter, you know, he's got to go after that one. So he's like, to Akihiro, can you handle these two? And it's constantly back and forth. It's like everyone is on equal footing. What is going to be the deciding factor in this battle? And I love that it culminates with this, you know, Maruba letting slip. Hey, these are the space rats. These are the dogs, you know, the dogs of war. We did the operations. What what good is a space rat that won't be accepting to this operation? You know, they used them as slaves. They forced it upon them. And you see just a penultimate shift in Naze's looking at this guy and believing what this guy has been selling him all along. And this is what halts everything. <laughs> <laughs> Everything has been so on equal footing, as I say, in this battle. You don't know who's going to come out alive and who's going to die here. It looks like things are really going bad for the Tekadon boys. But then because of that, Nazi wants to hear the story. He's calling his people back. Ortega's calling his people back. 
And it's like, okay, now we're going to have a talk. And this is where they needed to be from the get-go. All of this battle was, you know, kind of unnecessary, but no less action-packed. And, like, I can't wait to see what happens next. I have a feeling the Tewa's people, Naze, Amida, all these people, are going to be accepting to the plight of the orphans and are going to be accepting to a protectoral role. I think they're going to go along with it. When they hear the story from Cudelia, who I was another character I was impressed with in this episode, constantly is she like, you know, being rocked by this uncertainty. And there's a little moment between she and Atra and everything when she's trying to keep the spacesuit on. And she's not sure should I go to the bridge? Should I see this unfold? Should I expose myself to it? And because of Hatra's sort of happy go lucky essence, Cudelia's like, no, that's what I need to be. I need to hold on to human nature, you know, the trueness of myself, and I need to expose myself to this and see it through. I need to see these actions through because these are the people I'm representing as I go to Earth. And I love that. I love her courage in that moment. I love that Fumitan is continuing on as a communicative uh, role and, you know, a bridge crew, basically, as we see. Seeing Eugene actually step up to the role of command. Here's a guy who's constantly at Orca's you know, he's been the Thorn and Orga's side, constantly questioning every decision. And we did see that, you know, sort of a men's making moment in the last episode. And now it carries on here. You know, he's still voicing his concerns whenever, it, you know, it sort of goes against what Orga's planning. Even Biscuit in this episode, because of the truth of who Orga is, you know, the revelations he laid out for Biscuit about how his every decision is based on Mikazuki looking at him. There were a couple of moments where you saw Biscuit actually about to question Orga and be like, "What? what no, <laughs> you did the wrong decision. Um, but he didn't. He, he had to resign himself to the fact that Orga, even if the impetus, his driving force, is to live up to Mikazuki's praise and keeping him up on a pedestal, he's still not an idiot. You know, he's still a smart guy. He can still figure his way out of a paper bag. <laughs> even using that as his driving force and um as we see it kind of sort of worked out in the end with this accidental revelation in the heat of the moment by maruba now naze wants to listen he wants to talk excellent episode action-packed episode loved every freaking minute of it loved the characterization bleeding through all of those action elements and the suspense of it and it's you know, particularly pitched by the end to awesomeness as we move into the next one. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of Mobile Suit Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans Episode 7. If you watched it, if you enjoyed it as much as I did, if not, why not? Let me know in the comments below. Love having that conversation, even if our POVs happen to disagree. And yeah, that'll be pretty much it for me on this. Hope this video finds you well, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.